Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Could we see more rule breakers in packs today? I think the possibility of that is very high with EA most likely doing another mini release today for rule breakers team number two. Also, we've had insane market movements with a lot of these rule breakers going down in the first in the, on the market, then going up, now coming down again into the early morning UK hours. I want to take a look at some of these prices and as we potentially see a rise into the day today as people maybe try some of those cards out, new team two rule breakers. I just want to talk about all the market movements that happened yesterday on Friday and into today on Saturday on this game and what content to expect today on this game as well. It was a wild, wild day of Team 2 Rule Breakers being released onto the game yesterday with all of the cards that we expected to see because of the leaks earlier in the week basically confirmed. And I'll go through all the stuff that happened yesterday, but looking forward into today on Saturday, what can you expect? I think, again, one thing that you can expect is the mini release, right? We're talking about today, Saturday, on this game. Last week was the first time we had a mini release on Saturday. As you guys know, EA has been doing the mini releases of three or four cards on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday. They had been doing it on Sundays and last week they did it on Saturday. So Gundawan, Zakaria, and Barkhausen came out last week. Now this week, I would imagine that it is today on Saturday as well. They're going to keep the trend the same, I guess. That would be one thing that I'd be watching out for today. Last week when they did it with these three cards, there was really no other content except for some promo packs in the store, and there might have been an objective. But uh, there really it was a pretty quiet Saturday, and I'm kind of expecting more of the same today, if I'm being completely honest. I do think that since we got all of the cards that were quote unquote leaked to be in Rule Breakers team number two, these, these, this is a tweet from, uh, from early fr on Thursday. Um, you know, you saw Bamba, Davies, Corona, Machis. All of these cards are correct. A couple names are left out though, right? Cornette, Klosterman, St. Maximin is another name that's been thrown around, not confirmed nor denied, but especially the Klosterman and the Cornette. Those are two names that we were expecting to see in Rule Breakers. We actually did not see them yet. So I'm wondering if they are going to be a part of the mini release that comes out today with Team 2. Now, of course, actually, in interestingly enough, this Team 2 was leaked earlier on in the week this week, right? We talked about that on last night's video. But of course, uh, EA leaked this team early themselves. Yesterday, about 30 minutes before content, this web page opened up with all the cards on it. So I'm going to link this web page down below. It's basically just the FIFA 22 Rule Breakers page. And I would not be surprised that under this Team 2, um, I guess you could call this tab, if there is the mini release players like Gundawan, Zakaria, and Barkhausen, if they are shown here early today on Saturday, you could keep your eye on that to see if EA kind of shows those cards a little bit early. But that, when we're looking forward into Saturday today, that is the kind of content that I'm expecting to seeing. Of course, we will most likely have some promo packs. And right now, I've got a fodder card in my own assigned, so I can't view the store uh, going in through the normal way. So I'm going in through the FIFA points way. Um, but if we go to the store here again, yesterday we had the 50K packs and we had the 25,000 coin packs. The 50K packs are still going to be there today on Saturday. Uh, and so are these 25K packs. Interesting. They're all out for two days and 16 hours. So I would expect to see another type of pack get uh, put out today. 15 25Ks. Interesting. And then 10 50Ks. They might add a 45 or a 35K pack to the store today. That is one thing that I would kind of expect to see. And in 30 minutes, I'll do my preview pack. But that will be... Uh, on this video. Kind of a weird time for my preview pack because I've forgotten to open it for a couple days in a row. But also today on Saturday, and this is where I want to start talking about the market. We've seen a lot of market movements, even heading into the Saturday morning. A lot of the Rule Breakers cards have dropped off, right? There were some crazy fluctuations earlier on in the day on Friday. Now, a lot of these cards have dropped off to where they are now, especially this Phil Foden. Phil Foden was extinct yesterday on this game at 550,000 coins. He got a price range update very fast right and actually he was actually extinct for a short amount of time only about five to six hours i think this photo was extinct he's been on the market now for about an hour and a half his price range went up to 850,000 coins and right now he's sitting at 500k a lot of people are just selling this photo that they bought in the first place but i know this photo card does not look that great because the dribbling boost they took his dribbling away, right? And they gave him shooting, I think it was. But if you look in the in-game stats of this card, he's still four-star skill moves. 
and his agility and balance is still up near 90. If you give this a chemistry style that impacts dribbling, he's going to be basically the same card as he was before they knock down his uh, dribbling like they do with all of these Rule Breakers cards. They minimize one stat a little bit and they boost another stat like his shooting. I think it's like plus 11 or something like that. So I think this Foden card is going to be pretty hyped up today. And, you know, the fact that he's dropped so much after being released and extinct at 500k with that price range update, I feel like this card might be rising into the day today on Saturday. Now, I think that's going to happen with a decent amount of these rule breakers, if I'm being completely honest. Suarez is really rare. This is a really rare card, and he was 1.1 million coins earlier. He's going to be 900k tonight. I'm almost calling this right now. If you look on Suarez's flipping graph, I think he's going to be about 900,000 coins, but this guy is rare. I think he only has like five pages or six pages on the entire market. And the reason why the market drops off like this, yeah, he's got five pages basically at the moment. The reason why you see the market drop off like this uh, into the nighttime UK, into the early morning hours UK time is because people play with these cards in foot champs and then they sell them, right? They get a lot of their games in on Friday. They sell their cards. They, they open their rewards, get their packs. So you have a little bit of some late night supply and also just less demand because people, there's not as many people on the game. So they're kind of listing these cards up. And since there's less demand, um, it kind of drops the prices lower, right? We're even seeing it on Inform Vinicius at the moment. I bought an Inform Vinny Jr. earlier today, just under 500K because he was really low. And right now he's four. 45. Now, I think this inform was overpriced to begin with, but just huge drop offs on the market in general on a lot of these brand new promo cards. Anything that was in packs yesterday, of course, had a nice dip in price uh, on this game. I do think that you will see, again, some of these rule breakers from Team 2 rise up into today on Saturday. You'll probably have them hit a valley tonight or early Saturday morning and then rise up into the day UK time before again you see them trickle off an hour or two before content. So think of it like a low rising up to a high and then kind of dropping down again as we head into the content drop today because people always sell cards before 6 p.m. UK. And like we've talked about in the past couple weeks, if a guy like Foden, Suarez, Kessie, um, or maybe Alfonso Davies, some of your higher rated and more rare cards on the market, watch out for those to get sold off and drop too low in price before 6 p.m. today on Saturday. That might be a flipping window if you want to do some uh, risky flipping with a couple of those cards after 6 p.m. if you think we're not going to get a lot of content other than maybe the mini release, which is kind of what I'm expecting today on this game. So that's kind of looking at today on Saturday. I do think that some of these cards are going to rise up. Foden's probably still going to drop a bit more though. He might get into that 475k range like he is on the Xbox, uh, on the PlayStation before he starts to rise back up. So we'll be watching that. But I do know that a lot of people are going to be wanting to try that Phil Foden card this morning on Saturday. So I would not be surprised by that. But let's take a look at the rest of this market because it was a very, very profitable day. And I've kept some cards on my transfer targets to talk to, through some things. Now, quickly before we do that, do that actually, let's roll into SBCs and objectives and just cover this content for a second. We had another really great value SBC. If the, the cards that were released yesterday, a lot of people weren't that excited about them. They thought their boosts weren't that great. And I think it's just kind of meh, right? It's just kind of average. You know, they, they took Alfonso Davies down five pace instead of maybe only doing three like we wish they would have. Um, you know, they took Foden's dribbling down. It seems like a lot of the boosts that they did, like Kessie's boost, like, okay, it's all right. Like, why did they boost Alfonso Davies shooting? Why didn't they boost his defending, right? Who needs 84 shooting on a left back Fonzie? Yes, it makes a very interesting card. But I think some people were underwhelmed with the player selection of the cards yesterday. One thing that was not really underwhelming, though, was this Goosen's SBC. I know that he's not the most, like, I don't know, popular slash hyped up player in the game. But this is 40,000 coins for a really, really good card. Now, you have two options here. Just like with the Nkunku, you have a shooting boost option or a defense boost option. That's how uh, his player pick is looking. And I think most people, as you can tell here by the 2,400 upvotes, most people are choosing, choosing the defense option. This guy as a high, high work rates, uh, three-star, three-star midfielder, six foot, 
I mean, this is just a box to box midfielder in perfection at the moment, like with this card. So, you know, you're starting him at left mid. Maybe you're playing him as a left back in game. You can play him as a center mid, as a CDM, even a center back if you wanted to change him in game uh, and, and find some positions for him. He, this guy can can do a lot. So his his card stats look really, really good. And for 40,000 coins, it's basically the same price as Kevin Prince Boateng. Really, really cheap SBC. So this is a GG to EA. Uh, I know that it's interesting because... You think of Goosen's card, and you're like, man, I don't think this guy's going to get used a lot. But for 40,000 coins, especially if we were to get any sort of upgrade pack or player pick released on Monday, this could be a very, very easy SBC uh, to craft uh, on the game. So that's a big W from EA Sports. We also had two very cheap player of the months, but also very low level cards with this Luke Browers. That's like a 9,000 coin SBC. And the Robin Lenormand. We did not have an Alaba player of the month. I don't know how Alaba did not win. Unfortunately, he didn't. Uh, but Lenormand is also just ridiculously cheap. It's a rare gold squad and an 82 rated team. In my opinion, I mean, you're probably going to have some 81s or 82s in the next 27 days. This is out in, in the game. You might as well just do it and put it in the club because it's it's literally cost nothing to do. And it's going to be a first owner French center back for maybe some objectives down the line, 84 rated. So you never know where a card like this actually might come in handy. But this is actually, I think this is going to be a very popular SBC, not for usability, but for EA's metrics, he's going to get completed a ton because he's so cheap. So GG's on the price, I guess I could say to EA. The cards aren't that good, but they knew that, right? And they kind of priced them like that. So we also had our first ever, first ever of FIFA 22 league player objective and it's not letting me go into the objective at the moment okay there we go oxford a center back in the bundesliga from augsburg but he is english so some very interesting links with this card 81 pace 85 defense 85 physical and this all is done in the managerial masterpiece friendly it's out for 60 days so it is nice to see that we have milestone players back basically as he's recalled the league players um it's a nice card it's a pretty solid card if you like grinding the gameplay and you like these links because, because again, the English links in the Bundesliga are very interesting here. Really, really good for some squad building potential later on in the next couple of weeks. This card's probably usable for a, at least the next month in this game, I would imagine. Not a terrible card at all. So if you want to grind through a few of these in that managerial masterpiece mode, you can go ahead and do that. I think that's, you know, a semi-dub, right? I give that like a 7 out of 10 uh, for the card that they chose. Not too bad. So again, the content yesterday was decent, but I think the reason why you saw a lot of icons, especially a lot of other out-of-pack specials, really round rebound back on the market yesterday. I bought a Cordoba at 470,000 coins, sold it for five. 27. You saw a lot of stuff really rebound, right? I bought a Hugo Sanchez at 615,000 coins, sold it at 667 or 660 or something like that. Now the Corona links help this Sanchez a lot, uh, but you just saw a lot of the stuff that was already in the game bounce back pretty well. And I think you saw that because just the cards that were released yesterday, a lot of people said, mm, these cards that are released or this SBC or this objective really doesn't fit my team that well. So I'm going to go out and instead just buy the cards back that I had previously. A Betty Pele was like 880,000 coins. I think he went all the way up to about 950 where he's kind of cooled off a little bit now. So there was plenty of ways to make coins yesterday as we did for sure on the game. Now, one of the things I have to talk about as well is the first hour fluctuations of some of these brand new cars. Now, the only car that I bought first hour was a Kulusevsky. I bought this at 170K, sold it at 186. Uh, and now Kulusevsky obviously is like under 100,000 coins. A lot of these cards had incredibly insane fluctuations in the first hour of the day yesterday. Now, a lot of this was artificial. I'll be completely honest. This has become one of the more popular trading methods on the first hour of a promo this year, especially this year in FIFA, but it's become so popular that so many people are recommending doing it. So many people are losing coins because they're blindly following these groups, these trading groups. You know, thousands of people sometimes are listening to one person or a couple people make a buy call on their inside of their group. This Corona Brand new card yesterday came out. We had basically, if you remember, the Road to the Knockouts ESOC from a couple weeks ago. This Corona started off at 100,000 coins. The flipping graph doesn't even show it. He started off in the first 15 minutes on the market at about 100K. His price exploded in the next half an hour. He went from 100,000 coins to 190K. This card is not near 
anywhere near worth 190,000 coins. I know he's five star, five star. I know he's got good stats, but he is really hard to link. The only card that provides like an easy link to him that is really good in this game is the Manafa card and the Manafa Road to the Knockouts. And that card is extinct on the market at the moment because so many people wanted to go out and try. Uh, yeah, extinct at 40K, 55K on the Xbox because people wanted to go out and try Tecatito uh, yesterday. But there were so many fluctuations like that Corona. Uh, another one was Bamba. Bamba went from uh, 300,000 coins down to 200, went back to 238. Now is back down to 200,000 coins. There were multiple examples yesterday of a lot of people, uh, a lot of actual like traders and investing groups impacting the market. And if you get lucky and if you can time that really well and pick the right card, then you can make a lot of profit, right? After Corona went from 100K to 180, 190, back down to 95. I snagged this one at 95K, sold it at 116. I bought this Bomba at 200, sold it at 238. Um, so this Cassie card, I didn't make any coins on. He did go up a little bit later. He went from 250 where I bought him at. I thought he was going to go to like 280. He didn't. He went back down to 220, then went to 270. Like it's crazy. These fluctuations on these brand new cards are insane. And it, it's definitely not all natural because in previous years in this game, you would have the first hour fluctuation because some of that used to be natural, right? You would have a card that would get packed with a lot of extra supply. He would get pretty low. And then he would rise up as people went out to try that card. Well, now people figured out that that way of trading and now they kind of manipulate it in the sense that so many people go out and buy that it just creates so many prices starting to go up that it becomes artificial. And, and that is why you saw some of those crazy movements yesterday. I know some of you guys probably lost a lot of coins yesterday because of these cards and how crazy their movements were. And maybe you bought Kulusevsky at 170K and now he's 80,000 coins or something like that. So it's very risky playing with those cards and trading with them um, in the first hour or so of promo days, but it can be very profitable as well. Like right now, this Phil Foden, as we talked about, he was extinct at 550, um, and he's only been extinct for, he's only been unextinct for a couple hours, which is why you see his price dropping down so much, is because people who are holding this card are now listing it up. Um, but that that's a whole nother scenario and a whole nother situation with price ranges. Uh, but again, the rule breaker cards were just absolutely mental yesterday in price. Now, one thing I want to talk about too is the other rule breakers. Team one of rule breakers. Actually, yesterday, these, these prices have chilled out a little bit. But yesterday, what you saw was when team two was released and shown on the EA page, and we were like, okay, this team is not that great. People went out and they started buying cards off the market, including some of these Team 1 rule breakers. Holland went from 585,000 coins. I was able to snag one right here at 579, I think. He went all the way up to 637, which I sold mine at 630, and he's been chilling above 600,000 coins. Now he's dropped off a little bit into the nighttime, but he was up over 630K. The same thing happened with Usman Dembele, right? Usman Dembele was down at 760. He rebounded up to actually 820, 830K, and is now back down just under 800. But these cards went out uh, of packs and people bought them up. And Team of the Week 7 had some uh, some of its own insane market movements. This Vinicius Jr. inform right now is on a roller coaster ride and is going downward. Take a look at this. He was 600K, dropped all the way down to 500, rebounded back up to about five, he actually was about 540, 550. And then overnight tonight, he has been getting destroyed in price. He's down 50K from his lowest point yesterday to 455. Now I, I thought this Vinny Jr. inform was overpriced the entire time um, compared to his first inform. And now I think some of that supply from today's promo packs, yesterday's promo packs are starting to catch up with him. But uh, I think this has one more bounce back left in him as he is, again, one of the most popular cards in this game. He is never outside of like the top five or six most popular cards up here on the Footbin page just because this Vinny has so much hype at the moment. Now, I want to talk about SBC fodder because that's an interesting point too. I was hoping that fodder would drop off a lot. And we mentioned buying fodder this weekend at some point. It's really not dropped off that much. Take a look at Tiago, 10,000 coins. That's only a slight drop off, right? He was 13K on Tuesday after the Hero SBC. Now he's down to about 10K. I was hoping that we would get these 86s into like the, the 8K range, right? I wasn't expecting them to go back down to like 7K, but I was hoping to like, you see, you know, 8,800, 9,000 coins. And these cards really haven't dropped off that much. 
Uh, I, I hope that we don't have any SBCs today on Saturday so that this fodder drops down a little bit lower on Saturday, maybe into Sunday, and then we have another opportunity to look at some of these SBC cards. Uh, let me take a look at 88s really quick. Tony Cruz, 21,000 coins. He was 23 at his max. That's really not enough of a drop-off, right? I think there were people that were buying up SBC fodder because they were told to. And again, I'm not I'm not really going to say go out and buy this because it's not... It's really not cheap enough yet. Hopefully, it goes a little bit cheaper today. Um, and then we'll potentially look at doing some of that type of buying or a club stock maybe of some of those cards uh, in our clubs for potential SBCs that could be coming out later this week. So that would be one thing I'll be looking into at the moment right now are those fodder cards watching their prices today on Saturday. And again, watching the rest of the market, right? I'm not expecting really big content today on Saturday. I mean, trading with icons probably going to be a solid way to continue to make coins. This um, Michael Owen was, what is he, 540K? 540 at the moment. He was uh, 480 at his lowest. You look at some of these prices from where they were. These prices are all from pre-6 p.m. content drop. Del Piero was 1.1 mil. He's now in the 1.1 highs. This Carlos Alberto was 620K. He is now back to 690 almost 700,000 coins. There were a lot of price rises yesterday, like this Blanc was 730. Now he's what, high 700s? Again, since the promo yesterday, just did not live up to the hype as a lot of people were expecting it to. Um, I think that's why you saw a lot of the rest of the market rebound back up, even golds. Really quickly taking a look at a couple of gold cards. Yes, of course, some of them dropped um, due to the supply as always happens, but Ferlin Mendy, who was 84,000 coins, um, on the game yesterday, right before 6 p.m. content, I, I specifically said on the video yesterday you could buy this Furland or sell the Furland before the content drop. He was 85k, uh, and then buy him back during the pack supply. And I'm pretty sure that Furland Mendy only went back down to like 79, 78,000 coins. So we didn't have a huge drop from the stuff that was in packs. Only some cards have gotten kind of low tonight, like Gold Sun. He is kind of low at the moment. He's about 125. So um, but that might have been an undercut as well. Yeah, it looks like it was. He's about 130. So, you know, watch some cards into this morning on Saturday. You might see a few of the golds rise back up. You're definitely going to see some of the rule breakers rise back up. That's what I'm keeping an eye on at the moment. I'm kind of watching the Suarez, kind of watching the Phil Foden. Again, rarity. Rarity is key when it comes to flipping some of these cards uh, from, you know, a 12-hour period into the morning. So I'm trying to get this Suarez in the low 900 range. And I think if I can snag a Foden at like 480, Foden at 480 would be really, really cheap. So again, this is really risky stuff because with the way the supply and the way the market is this year, you, you never know. So Foden right now is kind of chilling at 500, but I think we're going to get some undercuts here. Hopefully if that is sitting, 494 is sitting. So we'll see if Foden drops below like 490, 480, and then we'll see where he goes into the daytime. This is some of the risky trading, but it's so much fun uh, to do this on this game. 487, that's probably get. Oh, it's sitting, really. Interesting. So I'm going to watch that card and see if it rises up a bit into the daytime today on Saturday. But a very interesting day. Again, Saturday today, I'm expecting some new promo packs out of the store. It's probably not going to drop prices that much, but it might cause some 6 p.m., I guess you could say, sell-off as we normally have. So watch the high-tier cards for maybe a sell-off pre-1 p.m. or pre-6 p.m. UK, and then a bounce back, and watch out for the mini release to be shown today. One thing really fast, I didn't talk about this in yesterday's video. If we were to get a preview pack, this preview pack was added to the code 581 to 86 rated rare uh, players preview pack. That would be a preview pack. Everybody would get to open and that would supply fodder onto the market and that would make fodder drop. So if this does get released today, that could be interesting as well. It was not released as a part of the content yesterday on the game, but it is in the code so it can be released whenever. So that seems to be maybe a tool from EA. They can you know provide some fodder supply if uh, they would want to because of course it's a preview pack. So it's basically free for anybody to open and then if you get something good then you decide if you want to buy it so that's the video for today boys if you did enjoy smash the thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new it's been nathan foot account and i'll catch you guys later peace